Hi everybody, this is Night Owl Fibers, a knitting podcast. This is my mom, Brenda. This is my daughter, Rachel, and she's holding my dog, Kirby. Yeah, she kind of blends in and Abby's trying to get on my lap. But, We're going to um, try this. We have been trying for about half an hour to get a podcast done and yeah. there has been interruption after interruption. We're trying to do it in the main living space and the dogs are very distracting. Yes. They know what they they're are. doing too. Yes. They want attention, but um, welcome new and returning viewers. Thank you for joining us today. This is episode 61. And we're coming to you from Southeast Texas. It is Friday, January 15th, 2021. Um, I am the Dyer behind Nidal Fibers. The link for our social media along with my shop will be down below in the description box. Show notes are non-existent. <laughs> yeah. If you see something or hear something that you want more information about, please comment below. We yeah. love interacting with you via comments mm -hmm. um, on our social media. So it makes our day. We just gives us a little smile. Yeah. And uh, let's see. We have um, a special little bit in our owl post, something for y'all. And we are excited to talk about that, but it will be yeah, at the excited. end. Stay tuned. Do you want to? You want to stay tuned for that? Yes. Um, we also have a book review. We do. Uh, I primarily dye self-striping yarn, and there's a really cool book that just recently came out about how to use self-striping yarn for other things than socks. So we'll be talking more about that and sharing one or two, I think, pictures that the book contains. Right. Yeah. How's your dye studio coming along? I finally have a sink. It's yeah. so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and I caved and started using mini heaters so that I wouldn't be incredibly cold out there. We have had a cold spell lately. Yeah. It got down to 27 degrees the other night. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is cold for us. It was cold. We did not get snow. Some of you in other parts of Texas might yeah. have gotten snow. We did not. We had so. sleet. We did, yeah. Which is fine. We were inside and warm and cozy. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and we wore a little extra knitwear those days, which was yeah, nice. That was very nice. Yeah. I end up wearing my knitwear most of the time because I'm cold. You're always cold. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was really a nice thing to put on the extra thick knitwear, the mm -hmm. worsted weight sweaters, and enjoy that cold weather. Yes. Definitely. We got some bird feeders outside, and mm -hmm. it has been so much fun to watch the cardinals flitter around um, out front in our front yard. We have some shrubbery that we hung the bird feeders from, and they just flocked. Like the first couple days, there was a lot, just tons of them, and. I did not know this until Christmas time that um, there's a saying and a belief that if you see a cardinal, it's a loved one coming to visit you from heaven. And I had never heard that before until Christmas time. So um, it's just kind of a little something special <clears throat> to have all those cardinals out front. Um, we need all the love and support we can get right now in these really interesting times in our country. It has been something else. It has. But focus on the positive. Mm -hmm. Crafting yeah. is our therapy. It is. Very much so. Yeah. So with that said, um, smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, grab some crafting, whatever you want to work on. Crochet, yeah. knitting, embroidery, whatever. We recommend puppies. They're good to have <laughs> nearby. Grab something to drink and we'll get started. Yep. Okay, so we'll start with stitch by stitch. And I have four things to talk about. Um, quite a bit of socks, actually. I keep trying to work on my socks and I just don't seem to be making enough progress. So, I'm going to finish this needle and then I'll show you what I am working on. I have some Gilmore Girl Club, a, a Gilmore Girl Club, and the colorway is Where You Lead, I Will Follow. I'm not doing a pattern, not yet anyway. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the heel. 
and there we go. The cord I have on the Cert Magic Loop is a little excessive. <laughs> it's it getting in your way. Yeah, I think it's a 40 inch, oh. which is oh, really long. Really so here is where you lead. I will follow, which today is the last day that it is available. So if you're watching this after the 15th of the January, there will be a different colorway out. And I'm still on my first one. So that means I am not ready to cast on this next colorway that's coming out. <clears throat> but I will anyway and then just have a couple socks on the needles. A yeah. couple. A couple. Um, times two. Times two. <laughs> Like four pairs? Yeah, but one pair is pretty close to being done. Yeah. So I am using a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle with 64 stitches cast on. And I really, really love the colorway and I think that might be why I'm knitting it slower. I want to enjoy every stitch. Oh, see when I really enjoy a colorway, I just want to knit, knit, knit on it. Yeah. It also depends on how much time I have. You haven't had a lot of time to knit no. lately. No, I haven't. I really haven't. Um, let's see. That is about all I have to say about this one. I'm not doing a contrasting heel. You aren't? No, and I'm still not sure what heel to use. Hmm. I'm doing this one at a time, and I've been knitting my socks two at a time lately. I just thought that I would be able to get it done faster if I had it one at a time. Do you think that's slowing you down? It might be. I don't know. I mean, every time I pick it up, I get good progress on it. But you just don't pick it up that often. I don't, I don't pick it up often enough. Yeah. So that might be a goal for the next two weeks. Pick up sock knitting more. <laughs> You've been reading a lot more lately, though. Yeah. I in your free time. Have. Yeah. Which has been enjoyable. What have you been drawn to picking up and working on um, lately? A couple of things. Socks and my sweater, but I will get to okay. the end of this needle and show you. Mm -hmm. uh, Lay Family Yarns and Sweet So, so, so Sweet, sweet Violet, Violet Jewels. Um, they are hosting a Rainbow Sock Chronicles. Awesome. And I ordered this bag off of Etsy. Isn't this adorable? All rainbowy. All rainbowy. And it was from... Emily Ringelman, Handmade in the South. I think it was from Louisiana. It's just the perfect size to hold my uh, 12 pairs that I'm going to do this, this year. And I went through my whole stash and found basically everything that I needed for all the colors for each month. Yeah. So I'm really... I am really excited about that. Because you get like three free <clears throat> choices. Right. So you start out with pink. Eight main colors. Then um, deeper pink, red, then orange, yellow, green, turquoise, light blue, violet, and then purple. Or lilac and then purple. And then the last three months you get free choices. I picked out, my first scene is um, Molly Klein Design in her A Walk to Remember, and I'm using the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern on it. I'll hold it just a little bit closer so you can see that texture. It's so pretty, and then down here mm -hmm. is without the texture. And I have a Progress Keeper on here that I think matches perfectly from Lock and Lou. It's a little violet. Sorry for the shakiness. And, you know, it is really fun to do just the pattern on a leg of the sock and then get to see what yeah. the yarn does in stocking knit. It is. It's been fun because I thought this was a little more purple than pink. Yeah. But I'm going with it for this first month because I'm not... We're already at the 15th. This is my first sock. I'm not going to be able to get cast on and another whole pair of socks done for the month. So yeah. one of those three months I might do more of a true pink, pale pink, yeah. to add to my rainbow. But you also realized once you started knitting stocking knit that it looked more pink in stocking knit. It does. Than it did. It does, with yes. The texture. Um I love don't get me wrong, I love this. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's been a colorway that I've had for a while from Molly Sweet Tea Yarns that I mm -hmm. have just been Loving just to it's look at and it's it precious and a perfect project. Very precious. So this is a perfect yeah. pattern. I did um, I think 15 
rows of one by one ribbing, 15 mm -hmm. rows of the Hermione's Everyday Sock pattern. Then I went to my slip stitch heel flap and gusset. Almost forgot to do the heel turn. Maybe picking up a little hard. Well, I got three stitches picked up and then I realized, oops, I forgot to do the heel turn. So I tinked back those three stitches and did the heel turn. Yeah. Finished all my gusset decreases last night and now I am working on the foot. It is awesome. I am using Knit Pro Zing. Um, Aren't those the super light needles? They are super, super light. I love them. They are US 1 2.25 and I'm doing 64 stitches. So this is my January colorway for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles. So I'm excited about that. That is awesome. Okay. Yeah, it's been really fun. And I'm just so excited to be able to go through my stash and pull out 12 skeins of yarn Yeah. that were sitting there ready to, waiting to be used for something very special. And it'll get you to knit with like you do knit with a variety of color, but it'll make sure that you're I'm not stuck giving in one color. love to all the spectrum mm -hmm. of colors yeah. in your stash. And that way I don't get stuck in a rut, like you said. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to use different dyers each month. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I might be repeating one person or maybe two people. Possibly. I Possibly. can't remember. I can't remember, but I have them pulled out, set on a little yeah, top we, of my shelf. We must have gone back and looked at your rainbow three times and just like, <laughs> well, yeah. hey, let's put this one in. Let's, you let's know. pull this one out and put this one in. It was fun to it was do. Fun. It was fun. Um, so yeah, that is my first uh, stitch by stitch that I'm working on. Cool. Well, what else are you working on? Um... Let's see, I haven't, I don't even know if I pulled this out, but I know I didn't show it last episode. No, you didn't. So, in a mini moon bag. I don't think they're doing bags pins. anymore. I don't think so either, but I just <clears> felt <throat> like giving it, saying who it was by. Yeah, I wish they would Let's do bags see. because their bags are so well made. Yeah, I am working on a sweater, so it's in a slightly bigger bag than my sock ones. And I am using Quince and Co. in the Lark color, Lark base. And what is the color? It is River. River, and it's really, really pretty. That is very pretty. So I. I don't think you have anything in that shade of blue. Not in this shade of blue, which will be really fun to have a change. I'm actually trying to use a needle co. Is that DK? It is. I think it's. DK may be worsted. It might be worsted okay. white. Well, I do have a progress keeper on. I just don't know if that was the progress I've made since I last showed it on the podcast. I think it is. And I just thought I hadn't worked on it when we last podcasted. But it looks super tiny right now because it's scrunched up on needles. But I am on the eyelets. This so is kind of hard really to show, pretty. but... You can kind of see the eyelets, and they're going to get um, more condensed as they go down. And yeah, I love my original campsite cardigan, and this yarn feels really nice. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd say it feels wooly. It is 100% non-superwash. No, it's really it's, soft. It feels like a superwash, but it's not yeah, superwash. It's smooth and soft, and when you look at the very edge, you know how you can kind of see if a yarn's prickly? And it's not. It's mm -mm. applied very smoothly. It is. I love my sweater out of Quince & Co. 100% wool. Yeah. It's just... And you had used um, a fingering weight no, base. No. No. Mine was a thicker weight. Cause, okay. Um... Yeah, mine's a thicker weight, and yeah, it is a really nice yarn to use, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to move my Progress Keeper so that yes. I won't show you guys the same Which Progress, progress Keeper do you have? It is a little leaf. I think it's the, is it Willow or Birch? It's from Lock and Lou. Yeah. I just love her stitch markers. Yeah, I love that she does nature-themed ones. Yeah. And that they're not all yeah. food themed. I really do love some of my food themed ones, but it's nice to have a variety. It is, yeah. We can't eat a lot of the food that is commonly made, made into stitch, stitch markers. markers. So it's just nice to have nature. Yeah. Um, so. 
Okay, I have last year's uh, West Yorkshire Spinners. Well, actually, last last year's, so 2019. 2019, that's right. Because um, we're in 2021. Yeah, because last year, 2020 was that pretty blue. Mm -hmm, like Starry Night or and something. This is Robin. And I had I have it sitting in an Ikea bowl mm -hmm. on my desk. Just, it holds my tin. Notions tin, a tape measure, and this sock project. And I am doing shorty socks on it because my husband also wants a pair of shorty socks out of this yarn. So I'm going to try to get two pairs of shorty socks. Their yarn always goes a long way. It really does. And it says the same yardage as some other... Um, Skeins I've used, but they're, mm. it always goes so much further. Yeah, this is a more rustic wool, and this is what I have. So I'm trying to mess with these needles. It's not working very well. Do you want me to put it on my blocker? No, it's okay. Here we go. It's just 10 rows of ribbing, 5 rows normal uh, stocking knit, and then I mm -hmm. start my my heel flap and gusset. Heel flap, heel turn. I have all the gusset decreases done. I found these little... Um, Peppermint swirls at Hobby Lobby. And you made them into a progress keeper. I made them into a progress keeper because I thought that was so cute. I did start this way before Christmas. And that's and still the first one. All I have done. It's still the first one. I hardly pick it up because when yeah. I'm at my desk, I'm always busy doing something. And yeah. I Yeah, you don't sit down there to craft. No, I don't. Um, so sock I didn't show this last time, but this has been a um, languishing project. I love the yarn. I love the project. I think maybe if I put it in a different spot, I might get more done on it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I am almost to the end of my needle. Yeah. And I have another pair of socks. I did um, these two at a time. And I decided to go with Afterthought heels. So I will show you this one. So it is Harry and Hedwig, and where this progress keeper is, I made all that progress times two, because that's when they were being knit two at a time. And then I put in an afterthought heel with the same yarn. I just, the afterthought heel started on a brand new yellow stripe, and I cut in on a yellow stripe. So it kind of, that looks, kind really of looks like it fits. Good. Yeah, so I did a rolled cuff because I could not be bothered to do ribbing. <laughs> did you do a sewn bind off? To yeah. Did you do a rolled cuff? I did, and it is stretchy enough. Okay. However, I need to, when I wash these socks, I need to block them on a sock blocker because I must have been knitting tighter because the instep really pulls. Does it? Yeah. Okay. So sock blockers and actually give them a good stretch. We've been having family dinners at a kitchen table or at our dining room table. Yeah, because we actually have the room to do that now. We do have the room to do it now. Here's the second one and I have um, the stitch mark where I need to start picking up for my yeah. afterthought. You were ready to cut in heels last night and your dad said, is that the Harry and Hedwig colorway? And I kind of yeah. look like Cause you actually remembered the name of the colorway. Yeah, because we'll sit at the kitchen table after we're done eating and just craft a little. And visit. Yeah. It's been really nice. Uh, I sewed four tablecloths this week. We went to Walmart and they have new Waverly fabric in two yard... Curvy. Behave. In two yard sections for sale for like $10.88. And it's the really nice thick fabric. So what I did is I bought, I picked out four different, well your dad and I picked out four different colors of fabric mm -hmm. and we threw them in the wash, washed them and then you hemmed all the edges. I hemmed all the edges. I just folded them over once and then folded it over again. Sorry for that dog walked by and just hemmed around them and it's the perfect size for our kitchen table in the dining room. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we've been just kind of sitting there in the evenings and Instead of being in front of the TV, we've been sitting there after everybody's done working for the day and just kind of chatting yeah. and visiting. And it's been really nice it to have that family nice. time, that quality time. Excuse me, my throat is really croaky today. I have been working on my sweater. And this is the project I have been working on when we've been, have been watching TV. The other night we watched Han Solo 
Uh, yeah, we put a DVD in. We put a DVD in. No commercials and you get all the scenes that way. Yes, so I was... And that's by Isabel Kramer. This is by Isabel Kramer. It is the Petula Pullover, but I am making it into a cardigan and I will be sticking it. I'm going to hold it this way so you can see better the progress that I've made because it is on smaller needles. So I've made about two inches of progress. That's good. Sweater bodies are fun because you just get to go round and round, especially yeah. if there's no waist shaping. No, I'm not doing any waist shaping on this, so yeah. I. Okay, anybody else out there who does color work? Rachel does color work and she does it so beautifully that you can't tell if there's a dominant color or not. It just looks so pretty yeah. and I don't know if my technique is wrong I ask her what do you do and she goes I don't know I just do it if you have any tips I please heard, tell me because she's of no help to me <laughs> to get my technique better but I've heard a lot about color dominance but I don't know the specific deep down details of it like just that one color you're supposed to hold in a certain hand or something like that but I can't describe it and I don't do anything Special. You just do it. Yeah. It just comes natural to you. Yeah, but I do think your color works looks really good. This is your first color work sweater. It is my first color work sweater. We have a steak panel in there. And I did steam the color work out so that it would lay a little bit better because yeah. it was really puckering right here. And not think, not puckering, but where you have all those increases. It was, it was it wasn't tugging. It was just there were so many stitches that it just kind of wasn't laying flat. Yeah. It's much better. I'm hoping that when I block it, give It'll it a good relax. soak, that I won't have looser stitches in the color work and that it'll even out and look even better. I think but it will. I'm happy with it. My first color work, I'm happy with it. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a beat around sweater around the house. I am using um, some wooly wool yarn. Very wooly wool yarn. It's 100%. Studio Donegal Darnie. And here is the card. And blue is just blue. And then the gold is gold. So. Yep. I ordered very it from. Very names, but very pretty colors. I think it was from Ireland that I got it. And it was very, very affordable. Mm -hmm. Of course, that was middle 2019 maybe early 2019 yeah and now that sterling silver has gone up in price i've noticed that ordering things from the uk is a little more money for us lately yeah so i may not be ordering as much from the uk as i had in in the past mm -hmm. but um yeah that's the progress that i've made it's making a very nice sweater i will get it done you know, the, I'm not in a rush. I don't have a deadline. Mm -hmm. It's just enjoy the process. The shop uh, that's called the Woolly Thistle. Mm -hmm. They sell UK and European. Oh, that's right. Places. I could see if they have. Yeah, they might actually be a, an American place to order it from. That's true. Of course, I do have some people in the UK that I love their yarn and I love their products and yeah. I want to support them. So it'll just be when it fits. When it fits into the budget. And when it's something that I really, really want. Yeah. Okay, I have one more project. Okay. That is all. The, I do have another sock project on the needles. I'm in the middle of gusset decreases, so I'll show that next time when I've gotten through the gusset decreases. Okay. And of course blankets. Yeah. I'm not going to show my Bits and Bobs blanket until I've made a little bit more progress on it. Um, I think I will show my Bits and Bobs blanket once a month. Okay, so I am working on the Soldantina by there. Caitlin Hunter. Yes, Kirby <laughs> wanted on my lap. So um, I am holding fingering weight double to make up the DK. This is the That's front of beautiful. the sweater, and here's the back. So you can see there was some short row shaping. Mm -hmm. And on the front, I have a progress keeper. Here it is. Okay, so is that the snowy owl? The snowy owl is right here. So it's very tiny. And then I have made some progress. I got through a chart. I'm on my final increase round. I got two, four, six, six rows done on it. <laughs> um, since last time? Since last time. <laughs> In two weeks, I've gotten six rows. 
So not even a row a week. But I am very close to separating for the sleeves. I think I have maybe eight rows left on the yoke chart. And it's a crop top or crop it's, sweater. It's going to be a crop sweater. I think it'll be really nice over dresses. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you can kind of see the colors and I love that the That is orange. so you. That yeah. is just... And then yeah. once I get to the main body, it's going to be this purple is the main color with, um, I think, black and these white variegated specks throughout. Mm -hmm. So that'll be nice. I did modify my neckline. I cast on fewer stitches and then on that first um, knit row, I increased because I wanted my neckline just a little bit higher up, higher up just a little snugger. Because if I put dresses underneath, I want the collar to hopefully be underneath the sweater. Of um, your dress. Of my the, dress. The yeah. dress line to be underneath the sweater. Okay, yes, gotcha. thank you. That, that makes more sense gotcha. coming out of your mouth than mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I am hopefully going to make some more progress on this. It should go pretty quick, especially once I separate for the sleeves because it's like this last few rows before separate, separating for sleeves take the longest out of the they entire do. sweater. They do. Because there are so many stitches yeah. on the needles. Alright, I am done showing all my stitch by stitch. Me too. I think we're ready to move on to all stitch together. Yep, and I have none. I have one. <laughs> if I would have just finished that one after that heel, I would have had, would have had a pair. I have finished my friend's I'll Be There For You socks. Uh, this is Rachel's I'm just take this off. Friends this. Club. Friends Club for the January color. Which again, tomorrow there will be a new colorway out. You're going to love it. She's got yeah. it dyed up already. Yeah. Um, I did Rose City Rollers. Well, not really. I did just, you do? You did them cuff down. I did them cuff down. So you started off with the proper row city roller pattern, right? And then I do my own, my regular heel flap and gusset. I put the red in because they live in the Big Apple, and yeah. the red goes with it. I just love the micro speckles in this. Yeah. It's so pretty. Sixty-four stitches, uh, US one two point two five millimeter, and I used K F Jones's umbrella toe, and I think it looks like a bullet. Yeah, that. it looks like a bullet. Mm -hmm. I love that. They, uh, Rachel just gave me 50 grams, and I think I had a yard, maybe two yards left from yeah. that 50 grams, yeah. and that's after putting in a different colored heel. At first, you thought you were going to have to do a contrasting toe. I did, but I just decided. To try it. I decided to try it, and I won at Yarn Chicken. So yay! Yay! First pair of socks finished from. Yeah. 2020. When I do things with um, minimal yardage, like not the full 100 grams, I don't worry about matching the stripes. I didn't, yeah. I just because, wanted to make them. Yeah, I was just like, I don't yeah. know how much it'll take. and yeah. If I have yeah. the yardage, I will make them match perfectly. But if yeah. I don't have the yardage, I don't care. I just make them. Why is that? I mean, yeah. I care when I have the yardage. When I don't have the yardage, I don't care. I don't know, sometimes it's just the joy of getting to do it. Yeah. I, these flew off the needles. And I did use 9 inch cirques for these. And when I got down to the toe, I used two 9 inch cirques. Which you felt were a little fiddly, right? It was very fiddly. Um, now that I have found my pouch of regular sock, sock needles. knitting needles. Which your normal sock knitting needle is Magic Loop, right? Same yes. As me. I love Magic Loop. I know. Yeah. You know, I got an email the other day, and it said that Rosewood DPNs that I ordered are on the way. And I'm thinking, I got those months and months ago. Why are they sending me another pair? So I looked through my bank account. They didn't charge me a second time. But you're getting a second pair. I guess. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I might try them out when they come. See how it goes. Give them another go. Give them another go. You know, I'm doing... 12 pairs of socks for the mm -hmm. for the Rainbow Chronicles. I might just try different techniques. Yeah. Could change, change it up. Fun. Change it up. I do know that nine inch cirques are 
hard on my hands. So yeah, I don't love think that hate will, relationship. I don't think that will become my preferred method of knitting socks. Yeah. I might knit with them again this year, mm -hmm. but Magic Loop two at a time is working well. I think I need to do that for the next pair I cast on mm -hmm. instead of one yeah. at a time. Yeah. I do have to say one at a time is easier for when we're podcasting or I'm trying to carry on a conversation. Mm -hmm. Not that I can't with two at a time, but it's just a little more fiddly because you're managing yarn. Yeah, it's just a little simpler to work on one at a time when I'm doing something like that. Yeah. Yesterday was sock washing day, and mm -hmm. oh my goodness, did we have a ton of socks to wash. We did, yeah. We but I was able to use them. Rachel's sink in her dye studio, which was really nice. Yay, it worked out well. Um, I ordered Woolen and Co. handcrafted wool wash. This is the one scent I got, which is raspberry and vanilla, I think. Yeah. Yes, this one is my favorite. It smells so good. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the other one was, but I used the other one. And this did not strip color out of the yarn, uh, out of, or dye out of the yarn, yeah. the color out of it. It just got the dirt. Yeah, and it left and a nice scent. Left a great scent. Was did a great job. Mm -hmm. So I will definitely be ordering from her again. And then I ordered two of these, one for Rachel, one for me. And this is her hemp anti-inflammatory muscle balm. It feels really good on my hands. Yeah. So. And it takes like a minute or two, but it absorbs in. Mm, it smells really so well. good. It smells like lemon balm. Yeah, it's got lemongrass as one of the oils yeah. in it. So, so I'm going to rub this in at night and have it kind of just help with that sore sore muscle, sore arthritis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bruised so. my hand yesterday unwrapping yarn mm -hmm. because I just stopped the mill a little bit aggressively yeah. and it bruised me. Yeah. And I put that balm on and it really helped, helped. the soreness from it. That's good. So that was one thing that came in Owl Post. I guess we're moving on to Owl Post. I just yeah. automatically did that without even saying. There's no more knitting to talk about, so I think we're good to move on. Um, and I have been ordering some stitch markers from... Let's see, they are really cool hexagon stitch markers. They are, but I want to show this other set first. So this is by? from... Let me get her business card that shows okay. it easily. Handmade, a lovely homemade life designs. I'll hold it up here so you can see. She has beautiful stitch markers in her shop, and this is the one set that I got. It has these beautiful purpley amethyst um, beads, and then the feather, and these are nice big circle ones. Uh, that I can use for sweater knitting. And then I got, the first time I ordered was this little hexagon. Yes, I've ordered from her twice now. I got these little hexagons for sock knitting so that when I go to mark the um, heel, flap and, heel flap and gusset decreases, I can just slip these really easily. I liked them so much that I went and I ordered a bronze colored one, queen bee, and then I ordered a rose gold one. So, sorry you couldn't see those real... Hopefully you got the idea of the color. Yeah. Courtney's going to come say hello to you. So if you haven't, check out a lovely homemade life designs. And then she sent, each time she I ordered, she sent other markers for me to try. The free set. Free set. Well, not a set, but try me. So I got two of those, and they're in different shapes. So I mm -hmm. thought that was really, really sweet of her to send yeah. extra littles. One of the things you like the most about the hexagons is, you know how jump rings will have a cut in them where you can pull them apart? Yes, you or get stuck in your yarn. Yeah, you can't pull apart the hexagons. They're a solid piece of metal. They're welded, to, or um, not welded, but... Yeah, they're soldered. Just, they're soldered together, so yes. it's not going to snag your yarn. It's not going to get stuck. So. It's all smooth, and it's a nice size. I can use it for sweater knitting too, not just sock knitting. Yeah. Now let's move into our book review. Okay. So Stephanie Lotvin, which Rachel has done a uh, collaboration, collaboration with in the past, yeah. has She's a, a really book, sweet person. Knit happy with self-striping yarn. Yeah. 
And this book is fantastic. I'm going to show you the back mm -hmm. cover because there are shawls, sweaters, mittens, hats, cowls that are just so inventive and wonderful that you can do with self-striping yarn. Okay, let's look at this one. I'll do it this way. Yeah. Look at this mitten pattern. Isn't that just adorable? I'll try to find some other pictures in here. Yeah. I it was I got it off of Amazon. So there's some sweaters in there, there's accessories. Yep. Those and mittens. Aren't those cute? Um, let me go back and find some more of the sweaters and stuff. And some of these you could use leftover self-striping. You some could. Of them you could use a skein or two. I'm not real impressed with the hats. I will say that. That is the yeah. one thing that I don't like are the hats. I probably would, yeah. probably would not some, do any of the hats. But... She used some different construction for the hats. But it just look like football helmets look. to me. Um, that cowl is beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to try and find a sweater. And she is Telly B Knits mm -hmm. on Instagram and Ravelry. And that's what her designs, I think, are published under. Right. I know the book goes by Stephanie Lotman. Here. So. There's a shawl. So if you are looking for a book, and you, you, have, you love self-striping mm -hmm. yarn, you want to buy, oh, okay, this one. Yeah, and they're all knitwear patterns. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Oh, just gorgeous. And didn't you say the front of the book has like an introduction with it does. size and yarn and stuff? It does. It's a great... Here you go. Here's another one. Yeah. I'll try and find some sweaters. You know, if you have self-striping yarn, people often ask Rachel, well, what can I do with self-striping yeah. yarn? I normally recommend Fingerless Gloves because I love knitting self-striping fingerless yeah. gloves. But this book really has some fun oh. ideas. This, I thought, was absolutely so adorable. The little baby sweater. Yeah. Isn't that just... Oh my goodness, so stinking cute. Do you know how many patterns are in the book? Um, I don't. Hang on. <clears throat> I dropped my paper, sorry. This one. That one I think has been floating around Instagram a lot. Oh, People seem to really love I that. I love one. that. Yeah. That is something I could wear in our climate. Yeah, it's flowy and comfortable looking. I like the boat neck and the, yeah. Really, really cute. Mm -hmm. This one. What did you say this one looks like? It looks like it, it looks have like a layering. Yeah, it like a layered look. Yeah, you know how sometimes you throw a t-shirt on over a long sleeve just to get an extra layer. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. It's got some texture to the sleeves where the self-striping yarn is. So, mm -hmm. I would highly recommend this book if you have self-striping yarn, but you're not mm -hmm. a sock knitter. And, and you also, want to do something different. It looks like it has some beginner patterns, but it also has things that are for more um, skill levels. Yeah. And you could just play around with anything. Yeah. However, I do believe like new knitters and beginners could try their hand at color work they and those could. kinds of things. They could. So, yeah. Yeah, it seems really fun to flip I would, through. I would definitely recommend this book. It is... A great way to use self-striping yarn in other ways than just socks. So yes, here's okay. your paperback. Okay. Um, and then we had a very lovely person contact us, which I am super excited to say he has started a Etsy shop Yay. and offered to give us and you a bag. So it he was is so sweet. He he contacted Rachel. Mm -hmm. His name is Dennis. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dennis. And the bags are super adorable. It is a friend's theme print. He sent us um, a bag for me, mom, and then one for you guys. It His is little coffee, coffee beans, beans on the inside. On the inside. Perfect for sock yeah, lighting. It's box bottom. So. <laughs> Thank you so it much, really Dennis. Awesome. You didn't have to send us each no, one, but you did, and that was so incredibly sweet of you, and we really appreciate it. I will be ordering another bag from yeah. you. His Etsy shop is Unusual Surroundings. On Etsy. On Etsy. So, 
So since we have one to give away, yeah. we will put his shop on the screen and at the bottom in the description, description box. box. And we want you to tell us which of his prints do you absolutely love from his online store. And we will send you, pick a winner, winner for next time mm -hmm. from the comments and send you, whoever we pick, you'll get one of these bags. Yep. So comment below, go visit Dennis's shop, give him yes. some, heart his shop, give him some love, and then comment mm -hmm. below which is your favorite uh, sock bag or pro project bag in yeah. his shop. And we'll pick a winner and send you one of these. Mm -hmm. And I really like the cord on the drawstring bag. Oh, I know. Bag. It's a nice thick cord. Yeah. It's yeah. not too stiff, but it does yeah. um, feel really nice in the hands to pull it shut. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to have to get one of my friend's buttons and put it on here so I know. Yeah. So we can tell them apart. Definitely. And I can't but wait to have a new cast on today. I know. Yes. Because your, your next 12 colorways are going to come out. Yeah. So thank you so much, Dennis. Yes. Thank you. And um, please check out his shop. Please comment below. And we will announce the winner next episode. All right. And please don't use the word giveaway because we don't want trolls or people just coming on who don't watch the podcast and aren't yep. subscribed. We want lovely knitters to get the lovely bag. Right, right. Yeah. So I think that is all we have for you today. Um, hopefully this, the dogs have now finally settled down. Yeah, I know they bumped the tripod a couple times. So. Sorry about that. Hopefully you like the new background. Yep. And we will try to podcast in two more weeks and hopefully have some more progress done. Yes. But we had been taking down Christmas decorations and trying to get those put away. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's been a lot going on. Um, we hope that you guys have been having a great week. You know that it's been something else lately with world events, but yes. stay healthy, stay healthy, stay safe. And enjoy the little things in life. Yeah. And we will hopefully see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye.